This is a House Hill original podcast. Yeah. This album is dedicated to all the teachers that told me I never amount to nothing. It's all good, baby, baby. See you trucks on top. Thou shalt not hate. It was all a dream. Well, Keith, I understand you used Google searches to help you break into acting. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I just got out of high school trying to figure out what I want to do. And, uh, well, I kind of knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to act in some capacity. So I started really just Googling acting schools, acting stuff, anything that encompassed acting, trying to find a, a sort of channel in. And so I just Googled everything, and pages and pages of things popped up, and I just filled everything out. And then eventually, you know, people started answering. And a lot of those were scams and things that I would ultimately end up wasting my time on. And so I ended up going back and forth from uh, L.A. to Victorville, scrambling up change. And, uh, one time, it was a school for modeling and career, and career center, modeling career center, and so they had us get up on the runway, taught us to walk the runway, and taught us all the names of the brands, like Fendi, Gucci, Prada, all these th different things that would be of no use to me, really, but at the time, I realized every other week they had uh, agents come in for the people that wanted to aspire to get into acting, so I wanted to get in front of one of these agents. and. When one of those agents came through, I said, oh, I want to go in. This is audition day. It was like every Thursday or something like that. And they said, well, do you have anything prepared? I said, yes. I didn't, but I went in anyway. <laughs> and I just did the first thing that came to my mind, which was basically just to jump up, up, up on the chair and be like, totally get it, I'm in it, and do some random stuff. And the guy saw something in me that he liked. What? Well, I don't know. And he signed me to his uh, commercial agency. From there, I began to do auditions and fail and learn what it meant to be uh, rejected, but be in the room and sort of build my comfortability over time. So it would prove to be a very important chapter, although at the time I just thought it was like I was wasting my time, but uh, it proved to be very important once I got out there and really started auditioning. I felt comfortable because I had been rejected and I had been through all of it already, so there's nothing left to fear. So yeah, that was what came of the internet. And I understand you didn't have a car while you were in Victorville? No. And I, from what I know, I don't think the bus really runs. Does it no. run? To no, Atlanta? there's a train that goes. You gotta scramble up some change and take the train. Okay, but that's quite a, that's a fit. It sounds like it's several stops. So how are you going on auditions and or, or, or even to this modeling um, class school and then coming back? I mean, that sounds like a lot. Half of it was just a trying to hustle up money to get down and get up on the train. And some of it was my parents. They would help me every now and again, take me um, whenever, you know, when, whenever my, my bugging them uh, sort of hit its brain. Like, fine, okay, we'll go. again, for what? Because when you're auditioning and you begin, you don't realize how much rejection's um, involved in it. So you get rejected 20, 30 times, you're like, what am I still doing this for? Obviously, it's not going to work. And it was so much work for us to get down there that they were just like, this is becoming more of an expense than anything. And so I had to figure out ways to get, on the, get down there on my own after a while. You know? And I missed a lot of auditions because I couldn't make it. But, uh, you know, and that sucked. That was a hard time because I hated missing them. I'd rather get rejected than, than to miss it, you know. Right. What's your advice for another actor that maybe they don't have um, the formal training, but they know they really want to do this? What would you advise them? What would they be Googling? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, now there's probably, there was probably 900 pages when I Googled. It's probably 9 million now. Uh, so there's much more to weed from, much more opportunity to get caught up in different things. I would just stay, I would say stay in school, stay diligent, uh, go through high school, go through college, and try to look through opportunities after having sort of learned all you can learn and situate yourself and be comfortable before you get into acting. Know that you're doing, there's something else that you could be doing. Know that you have a backup plan because it's a very difficult, tough game to get into. And, and it's tough to maintain even once you're in. So it's not like once, just because you book something means you're gonna be working forever. So you have to always, always keep that hustle up and continue to look for new avenues. And know that if this doesn't work, I got something else in the back. If that don't work, I got something else. Have uh, other alternatives as well. And don't focus all your energy on acting would be um, my thing. 
Did you ever feel pushback from people, from even other actors that maybe they were classically trained and they saw you booking more work and they were like, well, you know, you didn't, you didn't try this technique and, you, and so you could feel that. Maybe yeah. it wasn't even spoken, but. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it wasn't spoken and was spoken in certain <laughs> um, parts, you know. But um, everybody's got their uh, particular route. But the thing I think is important to be an actor is always keep an open mind, always be willing to learn. And don't reach a point where you feel like I've learned enough and now I don't need to know anything else. Because, you know, your talent will take you so far, but you need to be constantly trying to develop skills and learning how to access these characters and analyze these stories and tell them in the most uh, authentic light. And while your talent will take you a long way, it won't take you to the heights that you want to go because there's a cap, a moment where you're like, well, this is, this is just my talent. So you need to constantly uh, stretch yourself, travel, meet new people, engage in new experiences fearlessly, and sort of download that information into sort of creating what you want to create. Every role is different. So what may work for one role may not work for another, and vice versa. Sometimes your talent will be great for a certain role. And then for another role, you have to reach outside the um, uh, sort of boundaries of your uh, natural talent in order to tap into it. Those are things that I find the most rewarding and the most difficult. And they cause me to have to get studious and learn all these things, you know, and get into these different mm, lifestyles and understanding. So always keep an open mind. And I think you can explore and do whatever you need to do and realize Remember, this game is not a competition. It seems like a competition, but it's not. The only person you're in competition with is yourself. And if you think you can't do a certain thing, you can't. If you think you can, you can. You just got to push yourself, I think. Have there ever been roles that you don't want to take for whatever reason? You don't believe in the project, or, or there's something about the character you just wouldn't feel good about playing? Totally, yeah, yeah. Characters are realizations from people's imaginations. So naturally, uh, some are going to fit with your imagination, and some aren't. And some are based off of real people and are accurate depictions, and some aren't. So you have to use discernment and figure out what speaks to you, what's real to you, and everything's not going to be. I think when you first start acting, you're going to take anything that comes at you because you're trying to work it. That's understandable. That's what I did. That's what I think most actors did when they first started out, because you need to work. It is a job. But at the same time, once you start to develop your craft, and you can sort of weed out um, what speaks to you and what's important because it's also important to do things that uh, correlate with your frequency that go with how you're attempting to move because if it doesn't you're portraying something that isn't genuine and then your performance is good people are going to see it and be like there's something that isn't genuine about that so just make sure it connects to you this is why it's important I think to expand your horizons and awareness so that way more things have the uh, ability to uh, sort of click with you because the, 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 broad, the more broad your horizon is, the more chance you'll be like, oh yeah, I know what that is. Rather than living in a sort of vacuum and then something coming into your awareness, you might say, oh, that's too foreign, I don't know what that is, you know? And never judge the characters. That's what I say. What did Colin teach you about life? Colin Stark? No, uh, Colin <laughs> if Warren, we try to <laughs> playing him in this, uh, <laughs> in this movie, he taught me to, to, to uh, he sort of re-established re, uh, the idea to persevere and in the face of ins insurmountable odds, insurmountable odds, continue to push forward and uh, may, remain steadfast in what you believe in. Um, and the more you do that, the more you may realize uh, what it was you were attempting to realize or break the chains of whatever chains that are on. There are physical chains, psychological chains, stay the course, and you can eventually break them. Did you feel pressure playing someone that was still alive? That you knew the film would mean very much to them? To an extent, yeah. Um, I think that was lured by just a great team that I was around. Colin himself being involved in it helped a lot. It made me feel that he's with us in this, so I'm at ease. You know, he, he believes in the story, he believes in our ability, so we're just going to move forward in the spirit of that. Also, being blessed by his family. He took me in his house and they blessed me at this little uh, sort of, uh, like I said, like a shrine thing where they uh, blessed me, so I felt like I got the spirit of everything, so just went from there.